Hello and welcome to the Monday, March 6, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. First big shout out to our Sands Technology Institute College graduates. We had our commencement ceremony this weekend in Washington, D.C. And well, 313 graduates made up the class of 2022 and about 50, 60 or so, I think, were actually present in person at the ceremony. So big shout out here, a congratulation and thanks to everybody who was able to attend and sometimes traveled quite far to attend our graduation ceremony. But well, uh, let's talk about some current attacks. We have a great write-up, I think, by Sysdig, who looked into some recent attacks against Kubernetes clusters in AWS. What happened here was that attackers first gained access to the Kubernetes cluster that were exposed to the internet. Yes, they installed a crypto miner, but I think that's less interesting here. What's more interesting is that then they used the AWS instance metadata service to actually enumerate other AWS resources and also find credentials. That's a technique that's uh, quite common in attacks against AWS. We actually uh, do have sort of an exercise for that even in SEC 522 just to illustrate the dangers of exposing these kind of services and what can happen if an attacker gains access to this. Once they found the credentials, well, then, of course, they use the credentials to move laterally and then you know, continuously gathered more information, exfiltrated data, and uh, also disabled logging. I think it's also a good reminder, and I mentioned this uh, before in the podcast, maybe not recently, that whenever you find a crypto coin miner, don't just remove the crypto coin miner. These miners are typically sort of installed by simple exploits. They're sort of the bottom feeders somewhat when it comes uh, to exploitation. If you do find a crypto coin miner, there's probably a simple enough to exploit vulnerability here where you have other more sophisticated threats taking advantage of the same vulnerability. And Bleeping Computer has a nice summary of what you can do to actually block some malicious OneNote files in sort of more generic terms instead of just using a simple signatures. The problem with these OneNote files is that they include embedded content, in particular things like, well, simple executables, for example. What uh, Bleeping Computer here shows is how you can use group policies to restrict what content may be embedded. One option is that you can just block all embedded content, but that's probably not what you want because this would include things like images and such that are frequently included. A better option may be to basically block certain extensions like .exe.com. Trick here is, of course, that you're not missing anything important, but it's certainly an important step forward to block a lot of attacks by just blocking some commonly used extensions. Just be ready that this is a list that's probably going to expand over time. And then coming back to crypto coin miners for another story, uh, Cato Security notes that Redis servers are currently being infected uh, with crypto coin miners. One common theme they're seeing here is the use of transfer.sh, but uh, that's actually not so special. There are many similar uh, file transfer mechanisms that could be used here. The tricky part here is that these Redis servers are misconfigured to essentially allow simple, unauthenticated remote code execution. Not necessarily a bug in this case, just a misconfiguration of a feature in Redis. If you're seeing a crypto coin miner on one of these systems, remember that the attacker had unfettered uh, permission to execute any command that they would like to execute. So double check, chances are they may have executed other commands than just install a simple crypto coin miner. 
And well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.